Welcome to the Department of Knowledge. Today, we're delving deep into two of the most foundational theories that have shaped the landscape of modern geopolitics, the Heartland Theory and the Rimland Theory. These concepts are pillars of strategic thinking, deeply rooted in the idea that geographical positioning, particularly the control of key land and maritime spaces, can determine the balance of power among nations. Our journey will explore the origins of these theories, the historical contexts that inspired them, and how they continue to influence international relations in surprising ways to this day. To begin, let's start with a fundamental question, what is the Heartland Theory? This theory was proposed by the British geographer and strategist Halford Mackinder in 1904, in an era when the balance of power in Europe was a pressing concern and imperial ambitions drove competition over land and resources. Mackinder's Heartland Theory emerged as a response to what he perceived as a shifting landscape of power, where the dominance of the seas, a long-standing advantage of the British Empire, was facing potential challenges from land-based empires. In his work The Geographical Pivot of History, Mackinder argued that control over the central landmass of Eurasia, the heartland, could offer a state unparalleled strategic power. He famously stated, who rules East Europe commands the heartland, who rules the heartland commands the world island, who rules the world island commands the world. Mackinder's world island referred to the combined territories of Europe, Asia, and Africa, an interconnected landmass rich in resources, manpower, and economic potential. Mackinder's idea was revolutionary because it shifted strategic focus from the maritime dominance of previous centuries to the potential power that could come from controlling land. In his vision, the heartland, protected by natural barriers like mountains and deserts and devoid of significant navigable rivers that could enable enemy fleets, was a defensible fortress. It spanned across what we now recognize as parts of Russia, Central Asia, and Eastern Europe. Mackinder believed that if a single power were to dominate this region, it would possess the resources and manpower to project influence over the entire Eastern Hemisphere and, by extension, the world. At the time, Mackinder's work was considered a cautionary analysis, especially relevant to the British Empire, which relied heavily on its navy to maintain global influence. His work spurred debate among strategists who saw the potential threat of a dominant power arising from within the heartland. The region known as the heartland, encompassing vast areas of Eurasia, has been the cradle and battleground of some of history's most formidable empires, which launched expansion campaigns that threatened established powers and redrew borders. One of the earliest examples of such power came from the Huns, a nomadic people originating from the Central Asian steppes, who expanded westward towards the Roman Empire in the 5th century. Under the command of the famed leader Attila, the Huns developed a fierce style of warfare, characterized by rapid mobility in cavalry tactics, challenging Roman defenses. The advance of the Huns demonstrated the strategic advantage of the heartland, as its geographic position enabled swift movement toward the west, as well as access to essential resources to sustain prolonged campaigns. Later, in the 13th century, the Mongols, led by Genghis Khan and his successors, set out from the heartland on an unprecedented series of conquests that devastated Asia and reached as far as Eastern Europe. From their base in the heartland, the Mongols established the largest contiguous land empire in history, utilizing a combination of military strategy, mobility, and control over vast territories to subjugate peoples and integrate distant regions under their rule. They exploited the Eurasian plain to move troops quickly and expand Mongol influence, showing how the heartland could serve as a launching pad for the conquest of fertile lands and economic centers surrounding it. As the nomadic empires of the heartland posed a threat to the stability of both Western and Eastern powers, Russia emerged as a fixed and enduring power in the region. With vast territory stretching across the heartland, Russia possessed certain strategic advantages, an expansive area offering defensive depth and abundant natural resources. However, Russia faced a significant geopolitical limitation, the absence of warm water ports. Without direct, year-round access to navigable seas, Russia's economy was severely restricted. For several months of the year, northern seas would freeze, limiting Russia's capacity for trade and naval projection. Russia's quest for warm water ports led to numerous conflicts, 
among which the Crimean War stands out. In this war, Russia sought to expand its influence in the Black Sea region, aiming for a strategic port that would not freeze during the winter. However, European powers, especially Britain and France, intervened to curb this expansion. They recognized that if Russia gained access to warm water ports, it would increase its power projection and economic influence, disrupting the balance of power in Europe. By containing Russian expansion, these powers ensured that, although Russia possessed vast resources in a defensible territory, it remained limited in its capacity for maritime trade and influence. The Heartland theory gained even greater significance during the geopolitical conflicts of the early and mid-20th century. During World War II, for instance, both Allied and Axis powers recognized the strategic importance of the Heartland. Nazi Germany's invasion of the Soviet Union, known as Operation Barbarossa, was partially inspired by the notion that control over Eastern Europe and Russia could give the Third Reich access to resources and secure its hold over Europe. The Nazi strategy during Operation Barbarossa included a critical focus on securing the oil reserves of the Caucasus to fuel their war machine. Recognizing the need for substantial raw materials to sustain their military operations, Nazi leadership diverted their primary objective from Moscow to the southern regions of Russia, aiming to control the oil-rich Caucasus. This shift in focus led to the fierce Battle of Stalingrad, as German forces attempted to push southward towards the valuable oil fields, marking a pivotal moment in the Eastern Front of World War II. Following the war, the Heartland theory continued to shape global strategy during the Cold War. The Soviet Union, occupying much of Mackinder's heartland, held significant influence in Eurasia, and the United States and its allies invested heavily in strategies designed to contain Soviet power. The Cold War, in many respects, became a struggle over the areas that Mackinder identified as geopolitically pivotal. Now, let's turn to the Rimland theory, which was introduced by the American political scientist Nicholas Spickman in the 1940s. Spickman's ideas emerged during a time when naval power and the control of maritime trade routes were critical to economic and military dominance. He agreed with Mackinder that Eurasia was of central importance but disagreed with the emphasis on its central landmass. Instead, Spickman argued that the real geopolitical leverage lay in controlling the Rimland, the coastal regions that encircle the Eurasian landmass. Spickman's famous rephrasing of Mackinder's concept became, who controls the Rimland rules Eurasia, who rules Eurasia controls the destinies of the world. According to Spickman, the Rimland, which includes key regions such as Western Europe, the Middle East, South Asia, and East Asia, was essential because of its access to the world's oceans. These coastal areas serve as gateways for trade, military mobility, and economic influence, making them strategically vital in both peacetime and wartime. Spickman's Rimland theory recognized that maritime power and the ability to secure alliances along these coastal regions could prevent any single power from dominating Eurasia. His ideas significantly influenced U.S. foreign policy during the Cold War, leading to strategies of containment that sought to restrict Soviet influence within its borders and prevent expansion into the Rimland regions. This theory shaped numerous military alliances and strategies, including NATO and the Southeast Asia Treaty Organization CETO. These alliances established a strategic perimeter around the Soviet Union, aiming to limit its influence and secure key maritime and coastal areas. Although developed in distinct historical contexts, both theories remain remarkably relevant in today's geopolitical environment. Mackinder's heartland theory can be seen in the strategic posturing of Russia and China, two nations with vast territories overlapping Mackinder's heartland and which continue to assert considerable influence over Eurasia. China's Belt and Road Initiative, for instance, is a contemporary example of how the heartland theory still resonates. Through infrastructure investments and trade corridors spanning from East Asia to Europe, China is seeking to establish a position of influence across the heartland, creating economic dependencies and establishing a new Silk Road that reflects Mackinder's vision of a dominant Eurasian power. Conversely, Spickman's Rimland theory continues to influence modern U.S. foreign policy. The Pivot to Asia strategy, initiated under the Obama administration, is a clear nod to the Rimland theory, 
as it focuses on building alliances and enhancing military presence in the Indo-Pacific region to counterbalance China's rise. The Rimland theory also finds relevance in current U.S. strategies in the Middle East, Europe, and East Asia, where coastal control, naval dominance, and economic partnerships play crucial roles in maintaining influence over these strategically significant areas. These two theories highlight the persistent significance of geographical strategy in the international balance of power. Where Mackinder's heartland theory underscores the power of a consolidated land empire, Spickman's Rimland theory emphasizes the advantages of maritime control and coalition building along the Eurasian coastlines. Together, they offer complementary perspectives on the ways in which control of either the central landmass or the surrounding coastal regions can shape the fate of nations. Understanding these theories is essential for interpreting modern geopolitical movements, as countries continue to vie for dominance in Eurasia and beyond. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of the Heartland and Rimland theories. These ideas continue to shape the dynamics of international relations, demonstrating how deeply geography, resources, and strategic positioning influence the pathways of power. If you enjoyed this dive into geopolitical theory, please like, share, and subscribe to the Department of Geopolitical Thought. Until next time, continue exploring the dynamic forces that shape our world.